I think it's fair to say that the fittest flat earther has blown up on social media. With 272,000 followers on Instagram and 687,000 on TikTok, he makes shorts and reels on flat earth and other nonsensical topics too. And recently I saw one of his videos which he titled, Do You Know Earth? And I could not resist responding. Hello all and welcome along to another video with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. If you don't know yet, we're doing daily videos indefinitely from now on. I had that much fun in one a day in May. So make sure you're subscribed for the videos that are coming out every single day. Right, on with today's video and the fittest flat earther. He wants to ask us if we know Earth. Well, yes, yes I do. So what could he mean? Let's find out. You live here, right? on planet Earth. Well, can you tell me something about it? Do you know anything about it? Can you tell me how big it is? How big in circumference is it? 40,075 kilometers at the equator and 40,008 kilometers pole to pole. How close is it to the moon? On average, 384,400 kilometers. How close is it to the sun? On average, 150 million kilometers. How close is it to the nearest planet? Depends. Venus is the planet that can get closest to Earth at around 38 million kilometers. However, if you want to know which planet is closest to Earth right now, the answer can be either Mercury, Venus or Mars, depending on where each planet is on its orbital path compared to Earth. How close is it to the nearest star? Well, that would be the Sun, so still 150 million kilometers. But if you mean the next nearest star, that would be Proxima Centauri at 4.24 light years away. What's the curve rate? H equals R, open brackets, 1 minus cos times D times R, close brackets. Do you know how fast it's spinning? 15 degrees per hour. Do you know how fast it's revolving around the sun? Yes, almost 30 kilometers per second. Do you know how fast it's moving through the galaxy or through the universe? Galaxy, 230 kilometers per second, and the universe, well, let's just say the universe itself is expanding at around 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Do you know a single thing about it? Or were you just told you live here from the earliest age you can remember? Yes, it's called an education. Just like you're told about letters and numbers. You're told about history and geography. You're told about a lot of things. The thing is, the stuff you're being told is stuff we've learned as a species. You're at the end of a 400 year journey of finding things out about the world. And you just believe it. You see, I'm not asking these questions with judgment. I'm asking these questions from experience. When I thought I lived here, I didn't know anything about it. Oh, well, other than the cool fact I learned in astronomy class in college that always stuck with me, and that was that a million Earths could fit inside the sun. I thought that was so cool, and I would actually tell people that. And that is true. The volume of Earth is known, the volume of the sun is known. After that, it's simple maths. But then I heard that there were actually people out there that believed we lived on a flat Earth. So I'm like, I'm gonna prove these idiots wrong real fast. So I learned the math, and I learned the numbers, and I learned that the sun was supposedly 93 million miles away, and that the moon was supposedly 238,000 miles away, and that the closest star, Proxima Centauri, is 4.24 light years away, which is about 24 trillion miles. Already, I can tell that you think this number is ridiculous, so it can't be true. And I learned that we are supposedly spinning a thousand miles per hour on our axis. This is why you shouldn't use that as a measure of rotational speed. Because where I live, I'm not going that speed, and neither are you. In fact, if you live at 80 degrees north, it's only 180 miles per hour. Best to use angular velocity for this one, which is 7.3 times 10 to the minus 5 radians per second. Or in old money, 15 degrees per hour. Link for the 15 degree per hour clock is in the description. And that the Earth is chasing the sun in a loop at 66,600 miles per hour, and that it's traveling through the galaxy at 400,000 miles per hour, and that the galaxy is traveling through the universe at 1.2 million miles per hour, and I learned all the things. And your personal incredulity took over and made you no longer believe it. And well, they didn't add up to me. See? Told you. Not at all. 
because you start taking a deeper look and you look at how it says the earth is traveling in all these different directions and speeds, never to return to the same place ever. And then you look and you see that, well, why do the pyramids always line up with the belts of Orion? Yes, they do, but not perfectly, which suggests that when the pyramids were built, those stars were in different positions, different positions to what they are now. You debunked yourself, matey. For thousands of years, if we don't ever return to the same place, and if we're going 1,000 miles per hour and 66,000 miles per hour and 400,000 miles per hour and 1.2 million miles per hour and all in different directions, why do star trails look like that? Because star trails are due to our rotation, not the galaxy's movement. All those stars, by the way, are in our galaxy and moving with us. All the time, almost like the top is spinning. You see, once you actually learn the numbers that they tell us, and you know things like the Earth is supposedly 24,901 miles in circumference. And even though they tell you it's too big to see curvature, they give you a specific curve rate because we supposedly know the curvature. What? So we're not allowed to know the curvature rate because the Earth is so big? How does that make sense? Based on the circumference, and you can look and see things that are too far, supposedly, but you see them and you can zoom in on them and they're there and, well, you know it's not refraction, even though they tell you it's refraction and they tell you it's a mirage and you know it's not a mirage because you're not a blooming idiot. Oh, you know it's not refraction. You wouldn't know what refraction is if it walked up and knocked your hat off, my friend. You learn about it. When you actually learn about it, well, then you can crumble it down pretty easily. No, you can't. You think you can, and that's adorable, honestly, but you can't. Because when you learn the numbers and facts at a deeper level, you learn why. You even learn the why of the why. You can always do that, and I'm surprised you haven't, my friend. And But Tyler, we have pictures. I mean, you're looking at a picture right now. Yeah, this was the one that was on all of our iPhones. Conveniently, on all of our iPhones, right here. There it is. It's almost like they wanted to really make sure we knew we lived here. It's almost like it's propaganda. I mean, here it is right there. How can I argue it? I just think it's cool to have the Earth as a background, and Apple probably did too. That's all. Well, have you ever taken a closer look at it? It's called the Blue Marble. This is literally the picture from NASA that was put on our iPhones. Well, let's take a closer look, shall we, and see what we can find. I wonder if God ever gets lazy. Does God ever get lazy and he just hits copy and paste? Do you think he does that? He just hits copy and paste? Maybe he's having an off day? Yes, the 2002 Blue Marble was made by stitching several satellite photos together, as the satellites in question were too close to Earth to get the entire Earth into frame. So during the stitching process, some parts were repeated, as inevitably some satellites repeated photos. This is the original Blue Marble taken by Apollo 17. I don't see you picking holes in this one. I found these clusters of clouds extremely interesting as well. Kind of looks like a bunch of dog faces next to each other, doesn't it? Have you ever seen my videos where I talk how they hide dogs and things? What in the pareidolia? Looks more like stormtroopers to me anyway. And that looks like a little dog face. There's one there, there's another one here. They're all over the place. But of course I'm just kidding people, I know that I live right down here. And I'm spinning a thousand miles per hour right now. Don't you feel it? I encourage you to learn the numbers and learn about where they tell us we live. You'll quickly figure it out. Yes, you'll figure out that the flat Earth is literally impossible and you'll have a deeper understanding of our planet. So yes, please do learn the numbers. If you just spend the time. Of course, like I said, this is all for entertainment purposes. I know, I live down there. Yeah, you just say that so TikTok doesn't take it down. I know your game. Entertainment only, people. See? Oh, and just for the people that are saying, why, why would they do it? Well, I've said it a million times, but the biggest reason is to make you think you're an evolved tadpole spinning endlessly on a Big Bang randomly created planet amongst trillions of other planets and take any sort of insignificance of who you are and where you are and who created it 
out of the picture because we live in a spiritual realm and there's spiritual warfare going on and you probably don't realize that if you still think you live here. When literally billions of religious people know we live here. That argument doesn't work, Tyler. And that's part of it, is they don't want you to know. So you don't do anything about it. Well, guess what? I'm doing something about it. And I encourage you to, once you figure it out as well. Have a nice day. Oh, I will, Tyler. Thank you. You too. Well, there we go. What do we make there of the fittest flat earthers little presentation? Let me know in the comments below as I say we're all done and dusted for another video. Thanks so much for watching today. It's truly appreciated as ever. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the thumbs up, thumbs up button too. And remember, we're daily videos from now on. I've been Simon and Dan. Have yourselves a great day. And I'll see you all tomorrow for apparently some secrets about the moon and the Apollo 11 crew. See you then.